hello to everyone. I hope that you had a good lunch. Uh, today I will talking about optimizing Linux servers. Uh, my name is uh, Davor Gutierrez. I'm coming from uh, Slovenia. Yes, it's a little bit confusing. I have Spanish surname and uh, Croatian name, and uh, I live in Slovenia. And I, have, I was born in Croatia. It's complicated. <laughs> I'm working for the company 3GN, or in Slovenian 3GN. The company exists since 1996. It's located in uh, the capital Ljubljana. We have 33 employees. Uh, my, uh, our main business is uh, maintenance of uh, large IBM mainframe systems uh, for Slovenian state uh, government and Unix oriented systems uh, with uh, Oracle databases. We do a lot of work with uh, virtualization. Uh, we are primarily using uh, Red Hat Enterprise virtualization and uh, Oracle VM as long as along with other KVM and Xen solutions. Because of that, that, that we use uh, uh, virtualization, we must optimize our servers that we can pull everything from our virtualization methods. Uh, today we will talk about that what is optimization, uh, about performance, about software performance and hardware performance about server optimization on CPU level, memory level, networking level, about tuning networking, about system, on to, about system on to, monitoring tools, and about what are benchmarking tools on our systems. What is optimization? When, we, <coughs> when our server is slow, we bought new server, very expensive server, but it's not it, the stuff what we want. The server is always slow, always is something slow in our servers. We have new Linux distribution on this server. We are using uh, new Slash, new Red Hat, but it's slow. We must determine what is slow in our server. Maybe too, ma too many services running, maybe is something wrong with uh, disk drives with I/O, with network configuration, and then we must do TCP tuning, network tuning, disk tuning, memory tuning, uh, disable unneeded services, and such a stuff. What is performance? To boost performance of a server, we need just both: its hardware and its software components to make it operation, operate efficiently. When we talk about server optimization, uh, we talk about optimization, and optimization can include fine tuning of web servers. We can use Apache web server, we can use Nginx, uh, Nginx web server, we can use light HTTP servers, and so on. We can talk about disk optimization, about block devices, about RAID, about different file system the different file systems on server, including SCSI devices and SS, uh, SS drives devices. We can optimize our kernel on our server. We can optimize network, TCP stack, or TCP IP network stack. We can optimize firewall rules, or we can optimize some, just uh, all of these things. When we talk about server optimization, we talk about uh, about databases optimization, we can use MySQL database, we, we can use Postgre database, Oracle databases, and so. Uh, we, then we must use benchmarking and profiling tools, and we must find the bottlenecks what stops our server. We must optimize the settings in our server. We are talking about the data storage tuning and disk and memory, memory usage optimization. But where we must start? It it's always start with installation of server. You must always make uh, custom installation on server, uh, custom uh, installation of server. Don't use default settings. Don't just click next, 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 and then finish. This is the worst, worst thing what you can make. Always do custom partitioning, because when you when you install a default server, the partitioning scheme is like swap partition, root partition, and that's all. When you are doing custom partition, always make separate parti partition for 
war, war directory or partition uh, TMP boot uh, root home uh, USR o, OPT and uh, such uh, directories because if some of uh, these partitions fill up the system the Linux will stop working. If you have custom partitioning, if you have many partitions on your drive, you can uh, choose between multiple file systems. Some file systems are better for some work like the other file systems. You can use ext4 on the root file system and you can use some other file system like xefs on the other file systems. Then install only needed packages. Never install whole group of packages. Make minimal installation and then add packages which you need. Then you don't need xwindow or gnome on your server. Or you maybe do. Because if you make installation of uh, Oracle Linux, uh, Oracle servers with Oracle databases, then they, uh, this installation is dependent of uh, XOR packages and so on, but you can install only these packages and, and not the whole group of packages. And then don't, you, don't use uh, frame buffer devices on uh, your server. Console, text console on Linux is uh, 80.25 uh, characters long and not this like uh, SVGA uh, resolution. When we are talking about perform performance monitoring, then we are talking about that the Linux system administrator should be proficient in Linux per performance monitoring and tuning. To identify system bottlenecks and come up with solution to fix it, you should understand how various components of Linux work. Do anyone know where is the best documentation about Linux, about Linux hardware, the protocols, services, and so on, where you can find, find it? You can find it. Uh, you can find it in, on uh, every Linux distribution. Man uh, yes, main pages. Kernel, kernel documentation. Yes, the kernel documentation is the best uh, thing when you can, where you can find everything about not about Linux, about computers, about network stacks, about uh, disks, uh, disk drives, about kernel, about. Uh, services, protocols, uh, and so on. This documentation is the best thing w which uh, Linux has. Uh, on a very high level, uh, following, uh, the, the following uh, four subsystems uh, needs to be monitored. The first subsystem which to be, needs to be monitored is CPU. The second is network. The third is I.O. And <coughs> the fourth is memory. When we are talking about uh, CPU, you should understand that the, the four critical performance metrics for CPU. For first, we are talking about context switch, then we are talking about run queue, then we are talking about CPU utilization, and we are talking about load average. Uh, everyone has uh, heard about CPU utilization and load average, maybe, and maybe not about context switch and run queue. What is context switch? When CPU switches from one process or treat to another, it's called, uh, this is called context switch. When a process switch happens, kernel stores the current state of CPU in the memory. Kernel also retrieves the previously stored state of a process of treat from the memory and puts it in the CPU. Context switch is very essential for, for multitasking on the CPU. A higher level of context switching can cause performance issues. What is run queue? Run queue indicates the total number of active processes in the current queue for, for CPU. When a CPU is ready to execute a process, it picks it up from the run queue based on the priority of the process. Processes that are in sleep state or I await state uh, are not in the run queue. A higher number of processes in the run queue can cause performance issues. How do you know which uh, processes is run queue or uh, how much uh, the, is your server uh, uh, loaded? You can then know, uh, know by CPU utilization. CPU utilization in indicates how much of the CPU is currently getting used. 
where you can find CPU utilization with which comment. The most common comment is uh, top. You know, everyone know top or uh, comment like this is top, the essential Linux comment, then you can try uh, maybe a top. Oops, I must be a root user, just a second. This is a top. Okay, we don't see the this first line, just a second. This is a top, very similar to top, and uh, maybe uh, always more and more popular is H top with colors and these progress bars and so on. This is uh, the common monitoring tools for CPU utilization. 100% uh, CPU utilization means the system is fully loaded. Uh, when, is your system, uh, one, uh, when your system has 100 CPU utilization, when the load number, the first number is how much? One. One per core, yes, thank you. And this is this line, this. A high percent of CPU utilization will cause performance issue. What is load average? Load average indicates that the average CPU load over a specific time period. Uh, on Linux, load average is displayed for the uh, last one minute, last five minutes, and last 15 minutes. We can see this here. One minute, last five minutes, and last 15 minutes. And one example, load average of 0 0.25, 1.20, and 1.90 indicates that the load on this system is coming down. Why? Because 0 0.25 is the load average in the last one minute, 1.20 is the load average in the last five minutes, and 1.90 is the load average in the last 15 minutes. And this is now load average of, of this netbook in the last one minute. If I run top, I, I can see that the most uh, eatable the process is ex window on my system. And if I run maybe something like Firefox, just a second. Firefox, it will load some pages maybe one page with flash or something like that. I hope it will work. Yes, this is our homepage from the company and I uh, turn off Firefox, take a look at load and the load is a little bit higher. But if I run top in the middle of that, uh, Firefox is running, the top will be about 1.0. But Netbook is not so much a uh, good computer. This load average is calculated by combining both the total number of processes in the queue and the total number of the process in the uninterruptible task, task status. Then I have said that I will uh, say something about disk I.O. optimization. Linux currently ships with four different I.O. schedulers. Did anyone hear about uh, I.O. schedulers? Do, do you know what is this? Okay, someone else. The, and uh, do you uh, change uh, these schedulers or just put the default values? Uh, well, my laptop has uh, two SSDs, so uh, ah. it tends to... Uh... Okay, uh, I have one line uh, when, uh, where I talk about uh, SSI, uh, SSDs, that maybe it will help you. Uh, these schedulers are deadline, Noob, anticipatory, and CFQ. There are many 
differences between these scheduling, uh, scheduling, uh, scheduling algorithms. CFQ's uh, algorithm is the default algorithm in most Linux distribution. It attempts to distribute that uh, all I.O. bandwidth uh, evenly among all process requesting I.O. It's ideal for most purposes. When you <coughs> check which scheduler do you use, you will see that you are using uh, CFQ. NUP algorithm, the NUP algorithm attempts to use uh, as little CPU as possible. It acts a, as a classic FIFO, first in first out queue, expecting the hardware controller to handle the performance operations of the request. Uh, then anticipatory, this algorithm attempts to reorder all disk I.O. operations to optim optimize disk six. Is, it is uh, designated to increase performance of the systems that have slow disk. And uh, the fourth deadline, this scheduling algorithm places I.O. request in a priority queue, so it is guaranteed to be run with a certain time. It's often used in a real-time operation system. If you are building real-time uh, operating system, real-time kernel, then you must use deadline algorithm because it's the best uh, on these systems. How to know which uh, algorithm do you use? This is it's uh, saved in a sys file system just cat slash sys slash block slash sda sda is the name of the disk q scheduler and i use scheduler which is in this bracket cfq this is the default algorithm in uh, Linux, and I have here default installation. Next week, I will put uh, SSD uh, solid state drive disk in this netbook, and I will see if anything will be better. How we change uh, algorithm without any problems? Echo noob to the scheduler, and our uh, algorithm will be noob. If you use SUSE Linux or OpenSUSE, you can change this algorithm via YAST, yet another setup tool. Maybe more about system scheduler. Changing schedulers on the fly allows you to test and benchmark the algorithm you, uh, for your specific applications. You can change this with this, with this command on the fly and test the applications. Again, you, you don't need to reboot your server or something, uh, some other things. Once the change is issued, any current I operations will be executed before the new scheduler goes into effect. So the change will not be instant. It must, uh, you must wait a few seconds, maybe minute. Also remember that, uh, once, uh, that once one is set and performance to your liking, be sure to set the change to be applied on subsequent reboots. You can must change this with uh, this CTL command. It's often recommended to use noop or deadline on SSD drives. I don't know that, I must check this. This is like they said, it's good, but really I haven't tried it. There is usually no definitive answer to which algorithm uh, to use. You must benchmark each one uh, to get the uh, best options. There are cases when CFQ may not be the best scheduler for your system or applications. As an example, uh, if you're running a RAID disk with a caching RAID controller. In our company, we are using uh, this default CFQ but uh, now on the few newer systems which have been, uh, we have installed in the last two, three, four months, we are using uh, Deadline because we have uh, recompiled our kernel that we, and now we are using uh, real-time kernel in our soft, for our software. Uh, I.O. optimization. I.O. wait. Uh, is the amount of time CPU is waiting for I.O. If you see consistent high I.O. on your system, it indicates that problem is in the disk subsystem. You should always also monitor read seconds and write seconds. This is measured in, blocked, uh, in blocks. Uh, in example, number of blocks read write per second. They are also referred as 
buy and bow, block in and block out. Uh, you know which is the common for measuring uh, I.O. Uh, optimization for measuring I.O.? I.O. stat, yes. Uh, TPS indicates total transaction per second, which is a summary of RTPS, retransaction per second, and VPS, uh, VTPS, write transaction per second. I hope I... No, I don't have it installed. I will install it later. Then when we are talking about the disk IO optimization, we must choose which uh, file system we will use. The available file system is uh, on uh, the most uh, Linuxes are XT2, XT3. Yes, it's uh, Razer FS is still available on uh, SUSE Linux. Then it's XT4 in uh, Butter FS. It's always more and more popular. Then when we are talking <coughs> about disk IO optimization, we must use or change options in uh, FS tab, file system tab. This file, and these options. If we want a uh, much more higher uh, speed uh, for access to some files, it's uh, good to use options no a time or no dear a time. That access time will be not uh, written on the file. If you choose, uh, if you use uh, some, yes, sorry. Sorry. Yes, yes. Thanks. Uh, thank you. Uh, when, uh, when you are using uh, networking file system like uh, NFS, networking file system, or uh, TIFFS, common internet file system, Samba, SMB, it's uh, a really good choice to use this stuff. Uh, the access to your files will be much more uh, higher. Then when we are talking about this kind of optimization, we must choose if we have hardware rate in our server or software rate. Uh, we can choose between rate 0, 1, 5, and 10. Uh, right, uh, right uh, 5, it's not a good recommendation on the Linux systems because if uh, one disk is, is in failure state or broken, your system will be very, very slow until you change uh, the disk. For disk optimization, it's always good to check benchmark tools like Boni++. Plus plus, it's really good and very old uh, benchmark checking tools. It's available for every Linux distribution. You can find it also on live CDs. Then use HDParm. Okay, HDParm is for uh, older disk and SDParm. Uh, then first thing when you buy new server, you must always upgrade BIOS of your server and firmware or your, uh, of your disk. And the latest thing, thing I have uh, read about that a uh, few days ago, does your disk park heads? S some disk uh, SAS or uh, SATA disks uh, park head. And if your disk park head, it will be slower when you need uh, access to the files. With uh, newer, new firm, uh, firmware for the disk, you can choose options that your disk will never park heads. Then the next is network tuning. For network tuning, we must uh, have a good understanding of TCP IP concepts, uh, and this is very helpful where we analyzing any, any network issues. For network interfaces, you should monitor total number of packages and bytes received or sent through the interface, number of packages dropped, uh, collisions, and etc. I hope, okay. When we are talking about TCP tuning, for servers that are serving a huge numbers of concurrent session, there are some TCP options that should probably be enabled. With a large number of clients, their best uh, uh, clients doing the best to kill the server, it's probably not uh, uncommon for the server to have 20,000 or more open sockets. And if you want to change these things, 
you must change some default settings in the PROC file systems via sysctl.conf uh, file. If you, uh, uh, if you need to allow more local ports to be available, you just put this uh, command. You can then increase the amount of memory associated with socket buffers uh, and with th that you can often improve performance of your network. Then uh, you can uh, reduce the amount of the work that TCP stack has to do, so it's often helpful in these situations to turn off these uh, settings. Uh, these slides uh, are also available on Linux Foundation page that uh, you can try this. You don't need to write down these uh, comments. When we are talking about TCP tuning and you are having 10 gig uh, network interface controller, it's always very good to, to, to increase uh, TCP maximum buffer size settable using with set, set SOC options. These are comments for sysctl.conf. Then increase Linux auto-tuning TCP buffer limit. Then increase the length of the proce uh, processor input queue. Then to uh, recommend the default congestion control is HTCP and recommended for host with jumbo fram frames enabled. If you have such uh, uh, higher speed, uh, network interface controller, it's always very best that you try to enable jumbo frames. Then TCP congestion avoidance <coughs> algorithms. Every Linux distribution uses use very old uh, TCP con congestion avoidance algorithm and this old algorithm is Reno. Reno is traditional TCP congestion avoidance algorithm used by almost all operating system. And it's default in all operating system. Uh, the best in Linux is that you can change this algorithm without any problems. Then the second algorithm is cubic with the name cubic TCP. Then BIC algorithm HTCP. This is this algorithm here. Then is Vegas, maybe you have heard about Vegas, TCP Vegas, it was very popular and it was developed in, uh, at the end of the 90s. And then uh, Westwood algorithm, which is optimized for losing networks. Uh, in the Linux and Unix uh, operating system, you can change it to, uh, without any problems. In other operating system, I think that you cannot change it and you must always use uh, Reno till the next edition of your system. How to determine which uh, do you use? You can try with this command, cctl, tcp available congestion control. Let's try it. Oh. This is this. Well, the congestion control is cubic and Reno. And I used the first one, cubic. And uh, cubic is now default in uh, newer Linux distributions. Uh, on this uh, netbook, I'm using uh, Debian 7. Then <coughs> memory optimization. When we are talking about memory, if you have 16 gig of memory installed on your system, you have 16 gig of physical memory. Virtual memory is swap space available on the disk plus physical memory. The virtual memory contains both user space and kernel space. Using either 32-bit or 64-bit systems make a big difference on how much memory uh, a process can utilize. On a 32-bit uh, system, a process can only access a maximum of 4 gig virtual memory. This is the common stuff, you can uh, see this on a Windows operating system on Linux, that you can never get uh, 4 gig of memory on 32-bit system. On a 64-bit system, there is no such limitation. This limitation with 4 gig of virtu virtual memory is also uh, also problem with swap space. If you have 32-bit uh, uh, si operating system and uh, you need uh, more 
like a 4 gig of swap, uh, space swap partition, then always make two 4 gig uh, swap partition. Never make one 8 gig partition because uh, 8 gig partition will not work on 32 bit systems. Uh, unused RAM will be used uh, as file system cache by the kernel. Uh, Linux system will swap when it needs more memory, but disk is always slower like uh, memory. When it needs more memory, then the physical memory. When it swaps, it writes the least, uh, least used memory pages from the physical memory to the swap space on the disk. This is very slow. Lots of swapping can cause performance issues as the disk is much slower than the physical memory and it takes time to swap the memory pages from uh, memory read access memory to the disk. When <coughs> we are talking about uh, memory optimization on the newer system, so we are talking about the dense memory. This is hardware specific and it's not Linux specific. Then we are talking about NUMA. Uh, NUMA is uh, non-uniform memory access. Then we are talking about huge, uh, huge pages, about huge pages, uh, you have heard about that. Then we are talking about manage virtual memory pages. What is NUMA? On the newer system, we have one daemon uh, with the name NUMAT. NUMAT exists from Fedora 17, now we have Fedora 19, and uh, on the Red Hat uh, Enterprise Linux 6.3 as a technical preview. NUMAT is a user level daemon uh, which automatically improves uh, out of the box the NUMAT system performance. Uh, it's not enabled by default. Uh, it monitors available system resources on a per node basis and assigns significant, uh, significant uh, consumer process to align uh, resources for optimum NUMA performance. NUMAT daemon or service rebalances when necessary and provides pre-placement advice for the best initial process placement and resource affinity. You must, uh, if you need NUMAT on your servers, just and if you use Fedora 17, 18, 19, or maybe uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux uh, now 6.4, you can turn on NUMAT because it's not enabled by default. Then huge pages. Two uh, Mac pages are uh, versus four kilo pages standard Linux page. Virtual, uh, virtual to psychical, uh, physical page map is uh, uh, 512 times smaller. TLB can map more physical pages, resulting in a fewer misses. Traditional huge pages are always pinned, and traditional uh, transparent huge pages uh, that exist uh, in uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux 6 uh, and in all a new, uh, new version of uh, operating systems, not operating system, a new version of distribution. Most databases support huge pages. If you use Oracle databases, you must turn on huge pages and one gig pages supported uh, on a newer hardware. How to configure huge pages? Uh, 16 gig. You uh, just change uh, these values in uh, proc file system or change sysctl.conf number. Then flashing uh, cache. Uh, you can drop unused cache. Uh, with this you free uh, uh, unused memory uh, for file cache. In the uh, databases uses uh, cache may notice slow, slow down. If you need to free page cache, just execute this command uh, wait maybe tw uh, 20, 30 seconds, maybe one minute, and uh, this uh, cache will be flushed. Then if you uh, want to free slab cache, just, put, uh, just execute this command. And if you want to uh, ex uh, free uh, flush uh, page cache and slab cache, just echo three to proxy VM drop caches. You can try this on your servers when you, where you run databases. Then uh, a few words about swappiness. Swappiness controls how aggressively the system reclaims mapped memory. Default uh, is 60%. Uh, when we decrease, then more aggressively reclaiming of unmapped pa uh, page cache memory. When we increase this number, uh, then we more aggressive swapping of mapped memory. Uh, 
we how to change swappiness swappiness just a second this is the default value value when you are using uh, server system it's uh, recommended to uh, decrease this number on the your desktop systems are like your client laptops is uh, advised to increase this number you uh, when you are making optimization you must always remember that the 80 20 rule you know maybe 80 20 rule it's uh, one italian rule that uh, says that just a second i have copied this Uh, Wilfredo Pareto, who observed that 80% of income in Italy was received by 20% of the Italian population. And this rule is now uh, in everyday life. If we translate this to our computer IT language, then 80% of the performance improvement comes from tuning the application, and the rest 20% comes from tuning the infrastructure components. When we are talking about system monitoring tools, the most common monitoring tools which is installed on every Linux and Unix system is VMstat for uh, virtual memory statistic, Netstat for network statistic. We all know how does Netstat look like. which ports are open on our server, our, uh, on which protocol, what is receive queue and what is send queue. My receive and send queue is empty. If you see here very large numbers, then something is wrong with your network. Then you maybe have a, uh, has a lot of uh, dropped packages, maybe some collisions, and how you determine if there is any collisions on your system. I have config here. Received package errors dropped, overruns, frames, carriers, overruns, dropped, errors, and this the same for received and transmit. Then PS, process status, you all know this comment. Then top, htop, htop, mtop, iostat, and maybe some graphical representation of this comment. Uh, XOS view, but you don't have uh, I don't have it installed. Ah, it is here. Like load, CPU level, CPU one level, memory disk, viral slam, swap memory pages, uh, and so on. It's a very old application for every Linux system. Then when we are talking about kernel tuning, yes, the best solution is to recompile your kernel, but if you have uh, some uh, enterprise distribution like uh, Arch, uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux or SUSE Linux Enterprise Server, then you will uh, lose your support. If you are making a recomp uh, recompile of your kernels, then you must exclude unneeded, unneeded modules because there are many unneeded modules in the kernel. You can use real-time kernel, but you don't need to buy real-time kernel. You can build real-time kernel from your existing kernel, and uh, you can make kernel smaller. You can make kernel smaller with excluding unneeded modules. On the internet, I have found uh, some recommendation which things we can uh, turn off in our kernel. If you uh, send me an email, I can send you this table. Uh, this is a table of a kernel configuration options, including a description, the default values for a kernel and the recommended value for a smaller kernel. Uh, dependent of what you need. This is the kernel con configuration options, description, default value, and if you want a small kernel, you must use this value. If you, can, if you see here, yes, and it means that you can use this, but with caution. 
if you see here number, you can just uh, change this number. And uh, this is a table with which you can make your kernel smaller. Now kernel on our systems are big. It's This is our kernel, VM Linux, minus L minus H. It's 2.6 mega, yes, it's not big, but uh, this is Debian distribution. If you uh, can take a look at uh, Red Hat Enterprise Linux or SUSE Linux Enterprise Server, it's about 4.6 or 4.9 meg. And these are only kernel and static modules. Then uh, the other modules in your kernel is uh, saved in lib modules uh, and if 3.2686 83 meg of other modules which must load on the uh, system start and so on and this this kernel is not so big but because uh, uh, it's uh, like uh, it's compared like a real time kernel if you take a look on enterprise distribution how uh, much uh, how more, uh, much space does this directory uh, take it's i think about 500 maybe more meg then when we are talking about samba tuning we can enable iao but this is the extreme options then we must change socket options. This, uh, they say this is the best socket options for Samba tuning. Then we can enable raw read and write. We can use opportunistic locking. And if we use Samba, does anyone use Samba? If we use Samba, your log level is set to maybe number three or four use the smallest possible log level. Because if uh, Samba write logs to your hard disk, it will slow down your uh, server. Then about database optimization, yes, the most popular database is maybe MySQL. Uh, they provide a lot of scripts for, uh, uh, for MySQL tuning. There is uh, all, uh, one uh, Perl script for MySQL tuning application. You can optimize tables, you can use uh, uh, I know the DB or my ISAM tables. You can try some other databases. Then when we are talking about open LD app tuning, we have a big uh, uh, LDAP uh, tree in our uh, organization. Uh, you can index uh, all the things in this uh, open LDAP. If you add the following parameters, to slapped.conf before entering the info into the database, then we'll all get index and performance will increase. But you must do this at the start. Then uh, if you use Apache, you can uh, start uh, a massive amount of HTTP process, but if you start massive amount, it's a really benchmark hack. Uh, you can change these uh, values without any problems, or you can change, uh, or you can uh, use um, optimizers, memcache, you must tune to your Apache with uh, this, uh, min uh, you must minimize the number of Apache modules. When you install Apache, they have a lot of uh, modules which will you never used, or maybe try some other web servers, change maybe Apache of engines, depend on your, uh, what you need. Then what is benchmarking? Benchmarking, uh, a good set of benchmarking utilities are often very helpful in, do, uh, in doing system tuning work. It is impossible to duplicate the real world scenarios on your test, uh, in your test environment, uh, but that isn't really the goal of a good benchmark. A good benchmark typically tries to measure the performance of uh, one particular thing very accurately. And uh, if you understand what the benchmarks are doing, they can be very useful tools. Uh, the most popular benchmark tool is for this benchmark is Boni++. Them, 
uh, dbench is a tool to generate IO workload to either a file system or a, to a networked uh, NFS server to common internet file system like Samba. Then we know HTTP load, which runs multiple HTTP fetches in a parallel to test the throughput of a web server. Then DKFTP bench, the same, but for FTP protocol, Tio bench is a multi-threaded IO benchmark tester. TTCP is a utility for measuring network, uh, network throughput and uh, maybe uh, net perf for, uh, which is network performance tester. Then for the end, uh, when uh, you must identify, uh, identify and solve performance issues, you must un understand what is the problem. Whole, uh, half of the problem is solved when you clearly understand what the problem is. You must monitor and collect your data. After defining the problem clearly, monitor the system and try to collect as much, uh, as much data as possible on uh, various subsystems. You must eliminate and uh, narrow down issues. After having a list of potential issues, you must dive into each one of them and elim uh, eliminate any non-issues. And uh, last but uh, most import uh, important, make one change at a time. Don't try to make multiple changes at one time because, you know, you will never know what it uh, is help uh, for your system. That is, yeah, I think we have talked about 50 minutes. That's all. Uh, if anyone have any question, you can also write me uh, mail. This is my private email address, uh, company uh, web page. My blog uh, is in Slovenian and English language, and my uh, CV or personal web page with links to my social networks. Does anyone have any question? Yes? Yes, it's online on this uh, where the programs uh, program of uh, these conferences. Uh, there is link to presentations. So just uh, uh, click on the speaker name David Gutierrez, and there will be link. If you won't find the link, just write me a mail, and I will send you. Thanks. No problem. Anyone else? Where is the best place to read uh, kernel documentation? How? Where? Where? Where is? Uh, kernel the documentation is in uh, slash USR, USR CRC Linux slash documentation. This is one big, really big directory with uh, subdirectories, network, uh, disks, and so on. It's uh, very helpful. <coughs> Bless you. Anyone else? Okay, thank you for hearing. <laughs>